So this is a girl, young girl, teenager, who died of a sickness. And a while later after her death, her father in his dream sees her come to him crying. Day in and day out, every single action that's performed revolves around your family. Having that piece of your life taken from you is very hard. And having or seeing your own daughter that you are struggling so much in grief over her, in your dream crying, is a whole other thing. So this father saw his child crying and she was saying, Hasbunallah wa nam al God is sufficient for me. Most excellent is he in whom I trust. So the father seeing his daughter like this, crying and also saying, Hasbunallah wa nam al he began to shake in fear. And he asked his daughter, why? Are you saying Hasbunallah wa malakin? Who are you seeking refuge from? So the daughter asked him, Do you really want to know? He said, By Allah, I want to know. She said, And what would you do to him or the person that I'm seeking refuge from? He said, By Allah, I will get revenge for you from him. So this daughter says, Now you want to get revenge after it's too late? So her father said, by Allah, I will get revenge for you. Just tell me. So this girl begins to say, I am seeking refuge or I'm asking Allah Azza wa to suffice me from. And she pauses. She cannot continue. And the father gets angry. Tell me who it is. Immediately, this young girl's beautiful face explodes into anger. And that beautiful face turns into this harsh, disgusting, monstrous face. The father, just by, the, by seeing his daughter in that state, begins to drip in sweat and shake in fear. And she screams out, Oh, Father, I seek refuge. Well, I ask Allah to suffice me from you. Allahu Akbar. I seek refuge in Allah. Or I want Allah to suffice me from you. You failed me, Father. I was your trust. And you betrayed it. Allah is sufficient for me from your carelessness towards me and my sisters. You did not protect me and you did not guard my deen. And the father, now absolutely in tears, shaking, drenched in sweat, is asking, and what did I do? After a long pause, oh, Father, I am in a trench of the trenches of the hellfire because of you. You neglected us, me and my sisters. And he began to try and defend himself. But I work day and night to make money and get you whatever you want. So you can do whatever you want and go wherever you need to go. This is where the daughter increased in anger, loathing and animosity. Until smoke began to emerge, and emerge from her eye sockets. And she screams out, Is that all there is to it? You did not wake us up for Fajr. You did not say anything when we spent the nights watching filthy films and movies until it completely destroyed our Islamic morals and values. You did not stop us from spending the day in the shopping centers, mixing and mingling, laughing and joking, being harassed from here and there. But it never mattered because we were so used to. My father, you were the one who neglected us. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the father from the harshness of this dream suddenly woke up drenched in sweat, crying and ran to his other daughters to stop them from arriving at the same fate. But my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, by Allah, it isn't his, his daughters that he should be worried about. Because even if he does right by the rest of his daughters, he might very well end up right there beside his daughter because he already failed her. A child is one of the biggest trusts and responsibilities put on our shoulders. I feel so bad, I feel so sorry when I see parents in here 
praying in the front row and I know where the children are. What are you doing? Sometimes it shocks me. It amazes me actually. Not in a good way, but it amazes me how ignorant and naive some parents can be. What do you think your kids are getting up to in this country? That phone that you give them in their room, that TV, that internet. It amazes me how we can't see it or we don't want to see it. See, when, when you put a girl in front of music her entire life, especially love music, and all these episodes and all these movies, she puts in her head a standard. She thinks that's how it really is. And then when marriage comes along, she realizes that's not how it is. She can't cope with the reality. And hence 70 and 80% divorce rates. Who's at fault for not teaching her the right thing in the first place and then allowing her and allowing him into those situations? Is it not the father and mother? Are we not questionable on the day of judgment for these actions? My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, I want to touch on a very important point here. Islam is submission, right? Why do we submit to Allah Azza wa Jal? But the fact of the matter is today that we submit to what we want to submit to and the rest we throw it aside as if we know better than Allah. That's why when Allah Azza wa tells us to do something, we do it because He knows that which we know not. Because He knows what this will lead to. That's why we have to submit to everything Allah Azza wa orders. Every action has a consequence, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. Every single action or decision that we make that goes against what Allah teaches has repercussions. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, you could not have a child for 10 years in your marriage but still from the day you chose that mother you held accountable for that child if you went for looks instead of deen so she raised him bad you held accountable my dear brothers and sisters in Islam children even in the West here they've said that their brains are like sponges every single action we do they absorb my dear brothers you're talking about a newly born child who knows absolutely nothing. Yet within a year and a half, he's learned the whole language. How can we think that this child is not absorbing as well the bad things we do? Every time we get angry and we swear, you think that child isn't memorizing. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the Prophet ﷺ one day, he was sitting down, he was lying down in the house of Fatima. And Fatima radiallahu she was calling her son and he wasn't listening to her. So she put her hand in her pocket and she says come here and I'll give you this the Prophet ﷺ was lying down he sat up and he said yeah Fatima do you have something in your hand she said yes ya Rasulullah he said if you didn't you would have lied and you would have taught him how to lie Allahu Akbar the subconscious is a very very powerful thing, thing my dear brothers and sisters what's our job Allah Azza tells us through the Prophet ﷺ that every single one of you is a shepherd and every shepherd is responsible for his herd. What's my responsibility? My number one responsibility. Oh, you who believe, if you really believe that one day you'll be judged for this amana, this trust that Allah gave you, this child. Oh, you who believe, save yourself and your family, your children from hellfire. How? One is very simple. Allah says in the Quran, and enjoin order your family to perform the prayer and be persistent and consistent in ordering to, to, to do this. SubhanAllah, our prayer always pops up number one. SubhanAllah, look at this verse, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. We do not ask you for sustenance, for money, for wealth. We're not asking you to go work and make money. We will provide it for you and them. And verily, the hereafter is for, the right, is for righteousness. My dear brothers, almost Every single Muslim alive today is performing the exact opposite to this ayah. What's the number one reason why didn't you come to the lesson or to the mosque? I was at work. I was busy. Allah is telling you, I'm not asking you to go work. Whether you sit at home or your work, your provision is going to get to you. And you're not providing for your children, we're providing for you and them. That doesn't mean don't go work, but what should be number one? Guiding our families on the right path, making sure they're praying their prayers, 
their deen, their akhirah. But everyone's got it upside down. If I'm free, I'll come down to the mosque. If I'm not too sleepy, I'll get up for Fajr and wake up my family. My dear brothers in Islam and sisters, hear me out for a second. Who knows what the greatest gift Allah could give you in this world is? Righteous wife. An evil wife can break you, no matter how righteous you are. An evil wife will, will misguide you and your children. My dear brothers and sisters, that simple decision you made to choose that wife or that husband is going to decide paradise or hellfire for you. So the first right of a child and his father is to choose a righteous wife. The second is to give him a good name. The third right to pray to, to make dua and pray to tahajjud for their children. See the scholars used to say, one of the scholars used to say to his son, he goes, oh my son, I have increased my nightly prayers, my tahajjud and my dua so Allah can guide you. This fourth one was the words of Umar, was to teach him the Quran. Teach him the understanding of Islam through the Quran. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, take it from me. It is wajib on every single father and mother to sit down and teach their children every single day. That means the one who does not do it is in sin. I believe this from the bottom of my heart. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, our children are leaving the house every morning. They're learning filth from school, from their friends, from the street, from the billboards. They come home and they learn it from the TV, from their computer, from their laptop, from their iPad, from their phone. The worst of the worst of things they experience right under our household, right under our roofs, in their room, in our rooms. She could be or he could be sitting right next to me and you don't even know what he's doing on his phone. And then on top of that, you don't want to teach them any good whatsoever. Where's the guidance going to come from? If we don't train, teach, guide, befriend, be there for our children every single day to tackle the problems of today's society, which have very, 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 very many. Our parents did not even dream of the things our children are tackling today. They couldn't even comprehend that this would happen. And you all know what I'm talking about. If we do not, on a daily basis, be there for them, whenever they need, teach them every single day, they're going to be simply put a product of society. They're going to be normal. What's normal today? Normal today is zina. Abnormal today is someone who doesn't commit zina. He's weird. He's a loser. He's strange. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, I'm going, to, I'm going to say something. I hope no one gets upset. It's been happening for years and I just want to mention it. Have you ever heard a parent say, Oh, my son wouldn't do that. I didn't raise him like that. He would never do that. That's not what I taught him. It actually happened to me recently in Lebanon, maybe a year and a half ago. A father's child did something. And he's a neighbor. So I thought, and he's my neighbor, I could easily go speak to him. Went up to him and told him, look, your son did one, two, three. No, my son wouldn't do that. That's not how I raised him. That's not what I taught him. That's not... Mind you, he never taught him anything. It's, it's arrogance. It's pride. It's, it's, it's being naive and ignorant. I don't understand. Back in the days, they used to be happy when someone would tell him, my son did this or that. He'd be able to fix the problem before it gets bigger. Now, if you say something to his son, he'll come and fight you. Tell me the last time you sat down and you had it about the manners of Rasulullah. But yet you can easily say that's not what I taught him. That's right, you never taught him anything. When was the last time you sat down and read the stories of the prophets or the companions? But he can sit there and claim that's not how I raised him. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, protect your kids. Teach them. If you don't know, teach yourself. Get involved in the lessons. Be there for your children. Don't come home and watch TV. Sit with your children and speak to them, befriend them. Ask them what they're doing, what, what's happening on them with their lives, who their friends are, where they're going and coming, what's on their phone. Be there for your children. Protect your children so that one day we can unite with them in Jannah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik nashadu an la ilaha illa